the community is very well aware of what's going on right now within our communities, you know, especially when it comes to health concerns. Everybody knows what's going on. You know, everybody knows that we have STI issues. If our young person is HIV and sleeping around, then it would spread out very quickly within the Tlintro nations. And so that's why we panicked and decided we need to do something about this. We have seen for years and years uh, the classic uh, medical approaches to, to diseases, whether it's TB or whether it's uh, STIs, is not making a uh, tremendous impact in the communities. We still have, have significant issues with those diseases. It's not just an infectious issue. I think it's a whole cluster of, of how people relate to each other, how they feel about themselves, all of these things which are really often outside the, the domain of, of, of nurses and health centers and very much inside the domain of, of communities and elders. Our culture is that the, you know, sex is very, they keep a very uh, big secret so that parents never talk to us about stuff like that. There's a real need if we want to be successful with our program to, to involve people who are born and raised in the communities and to involve them in the development of strategies. When we work with other uh, people or other non-Aboriginal people, when they come in and work with us, they often come in and tell us what to do. And oftentimes they don't know the community, they don't know the people, and they don't know how to work with local people, but they come in, they tell us what to do. And uh, it doesn't work well with us. The thought that working with See It would allow us the opportunity to develop a, a solid research foundation for the kind of work that we were doing, to, to learn what would be effective strategies to, to move forward with. We knew Nancy, we knew of her work, we knew of her connections with See It, and so it was a logical choice to go and ask her for assistance. They're not being exposed to it. And so when we met the See It team, uh, they came to us and they said, what do you want? What can we do? How can we help you? Um, they gave us the teachings that we need on how to do the surveys, you know, how to ask questions, and, and they just gone through the whole process with us. And just simply because they were such open-minded people, you know, and they, it made it very easy for us, the CBRs, just to take it and go with it. They were very kind, very understanding, they're very open, and that's, what, uh, that's the thing that I like about them. It's very easy to talk to them. And that's really important because this clearly is a project where, where uh, people from our communities are, are taking the lead on it, but see it is there to assist in, in any way they possibly can. And that's, uh, that's very rare. Often people say that's going to happen, but it doesn't. We've lost many of our wonderful el elders. And each one of the communities had a strong elder that everybody would look up to. Uh, when we were looking for questionnaires, they brought in expertise about questions that, that would have particular results in the communities, and yet they didn't make the final decision. The decisions were made by the community-based team themselves. We knew that trust would be a, a very, very big issue uh, because of the sensitivity of the survey. So we were very careful to try to uh, involve uh, people who were trusted and respected in the community. Well, it is um, something very different because it's never been done before in a community. Oh, it was um, difficult at, the, at first because there was a lot of questions you have to ask. And we have to translate it in our own language. So we had to work through that as a group, the CBRs, we all had to work through it and figure out how we can ask those questions without offending the elders. 
When you sit down and talk with the teams and uh, uh, hear the stories that they were telling, they were, they were met in most instances, not all, but in most instance, instances, with uh, people welcoming them into their homes. Most people felt that uh, they recognized in our community-based researchers other people who were coming in and cared about them, cared about their families and cared about the communities. But you, you have to make time to go back and see them again. For us local CBRs, we were born and raised in these communities. And in our mind, we have certain set in our mind of the way we do things, how we say things, where we're trained as Aboriginal, as, as, as Tlingshun people, and we can't see beyond that. So when we have outsiders like Karen, Nancy, or Steve come in, they can see beyond that, and they open up our minds a little bit. So that we don't just produce a report that ends with the numbers, but a report that also has the action plan that we develop together. And I think the community should also try to be a little bit more tolerant working with other organizations because we can't do it ourselves. If we were here, the CBRs, if we were to do the surveys just by ourselves, I don't think we would have gotten as much information as we have. And HIV or there's no word for it in the other band. Then once the, the work was actually done in the homes, those questionnaires have been taken and analyzed uh, with the tools that they have to to allow us to uh, to really see what we've got here and really see the the, the, the nature of, of the situation that we're dealing with. What are the findings that you guys see as the most striking, the most important? What are the ones that you think that surprised you? The next one will be to have a follow-up, go back to each community. All the findings we're going to have to share with the people so we have to go back and do the follow-up with the people. Whatever they find, just pass it on to um, uh, uh, the people, the young people or the people that they're going to teach. Say, hey, this is what we're finding out through the surveys. This is what came out. And this is what we need to deal with. And this is how we're going to deal with it. Those are some of the messages I think we have to bring out right away and then see what the elders have to say after that. I have three grandchildren and I'm thinking about their future. I want them to have a healthy lifestyle in the future. I hope so. I'm pretty sure it will make a difference. We want to have control over our own life, what goes on in our home, how we raise our family and how we educate our kids. We want to have full control over it. The elders often says, if we have problems within our community, it, all, it, it is our problem. It's not outsiders' problems. We can deal with it. We will come up with our own solutions and we will deal with our own issues. And that's what the elders have always said.